YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this thing. It's so cool. 50 millimeters. All the flattering angles that I can give you because every time I see pictures of this plane from Isheen, they have it at unflattering angles. I don't know why, it is beautiful. It's one of the most scale, detailed little ones we've seen in a long time and I'm super excited to bring it to you. Here's the thing, we use an old AR636B that we had from a crash plane and we did some voodoo magic to make it work with AS3X and safe. Watch this, up, down, roll, roll. It's working the right direction. There's no rudder, but we did mix this stick. Okay, so that's gonna roll, that's gonna roll, that's gonna roll. We're just doing our final control surface test. Everything's working the right way, but check this out. Safe. It's gonna fly upside down. So we're gonna see how that works. It might be kind of cool, it might be a huge catastrophe. So technically we could launch this plane upside down with safe, which would be pretty cool, and we may try that. But without further ado, I'm gonna launch uh, probably here so we have some down and we have uh, some grass if we have problems with trimming. Throttle cuts off. I'm gonna pretty, pretty hard throw this. <laughs> oh man, that's not bad at all. AS3X has that thing locked in. We need a little bit of back trim here. There we go. 50% throttle there. Okay, this is a bank and yank. Look at that beautiful sunset, folks. Over the power lines here. Full throttle. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, so cool. So cool. Guys, loving it. 1300 milliamp 3S, really light plane. Check this out. Check this out. Here we go, right next to us. Not the most powerful thing we've ever flown, but I'll tell you what, it looks really good in the sky. Pretty easy to fly too. AS3X working great. Could use a little extra juice, I must admit. Okay, gonna flatten out here. We'll see what it does when we turn on safe at a few mistakes, I. Let's roll first. Roll, jank it up, see how it stalls. Oh yeah, we're good. Out of the throttle. What is this like, the birds? No kidding. What's going on? What is going on? There's like a million birds all of a sudden. So folks, if you get yourself an AR630, no antenna, it would be perfect for this plane. If you get yourself an AR631 with the antennas, I think you're gonna be just as satisfied for five bucks more. Pretty good high speed actually. Being that it's a bank and yank, I'm pretty confident with it. It feels good. A little bit shaky on the AS3X, but we did not tune the AS3X either. Man, nice performance. Okay, I hear beeping. Yep. Let's try safe. <laughs> okay, we're not gonna try safe. Okay, I'm gonna land it. Okay, so this is a belly lander. And the canopy came off, everybody died. <laughs> Let's see how we did, guys. This plane is really cool, it's not hard to fly. I wasn't sure what to expect. Okay, so the canopy did pop off, not surprisingly. There's a big magnet on the back. So camera crew, would you mind holding that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see how this looks. Everything's intact, we're at 3.8. I think what's gonna go on is it's gonna draw that voltage down pretty bad when we come out of this and give it some throttle. I don't know, we might be able to go for a little bit longer. I think we're gonna go for a little bit longer. Think so? Yeah. Yeah, we can go for a little bit longer. Belly landers always have a high propensity to get damaged, but that was pretty good, guys. I didn't notice anything too out of the ordinary. <laughs> okay, so now the safe didn't quite work the way I expected, but I'm gonna go ahead and get it upside down before I turn it on this time, if I have enough power and time. Keep in mind, 
banking yank means that you do need a little bit of power to get it where you're going. You can't yaw it and keep it flat, okay? Throttle cuts off. We're gonna launch that way, you good? Yeah. 50% throttle, hard throw. There you go. Man, that thing looks so sweet. Okay, getting ready to go upside down. <laughs> okay, so we evidently have that receiver at maybe not the best angle because you gotta remember we did quite a bit of a trim correction, which tells me, that tells me what's gonna happen is it's gonna pretty much not have that trim correction for safe. Oh man, that thing looks so good. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Let's see it glide. Folks, this Esheen F16 is really cool. I know some of our uh, competitors, peers, whatever you want to call them, uh, had some trouble. We did take some remedial action, so thanks for showing us what happened. Uh, we went ahead and glued our leads to keep the ESC from dropping our wires down into the EDF. We appreciate the heads up, Nate. It is kind of annoying that we had to do that, by the way. Guys, we're kind of pushing the limits now, just so you can see how it'll do. I am actually kind of in love with the way this thing's flying. I am a sucker for F-16s. You may have already noticed from the F-18 80 millimeter, or excuse me, the F-16 80 millimeter. Let's go check it out. I was kind of running out of juice there. So I'm at 36 seconds. So that was a five minute flight time with some downtime. So I would say on a 1300 3S, the way I was flying, you're probably looking at closer to maybe a four minute flight time, maybe three and a half would be safe. That's a pretty small battery. I'd like to see a little bit longer flight time. Look at that beautiful sunset. Mm -hmm. And by the way, did you see all the birds? What the heck happened oh, that's there? Crazy. So bizarre. So we'll see how it did on damage for a, a belly lander. Like I said, you do tend to get damage from time to time. Look at that. The nose broke off. That's mm -hmm. annoying. I wouldn't necessarily claim that that was a very good landing, by the way, folks. But yeah, that'll be like a 30 second fix. We'll just put a little glue on there and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Little Probably throw a uh, toothpick stick. or something in there. A put, put a little st sticky in there. But guys, this plane is sweet. I love the way it's flying. Let's get this incessant beeping out of here. Now, if you want this thing to fly a little bit easier and not quite such a frustrating experience for the radio setup, don't use one out of a crash plane that has the opposite control for your elevator or your ailerons. That's one way you can do that. Secondly, mechanical adjustment on the elevator to get the trim where we need it would help that safe to actually work upside down. But you can see we mounted that upside down like a bunch of goofballs. You can stick around and watch the way we did the radio setup. It's a little bit unusual for us, but we're gonna go ahead and take a second and hook up the XBC battery checker. And uh, this thing is just really, it's a solid plane actually for being a small plane. The only problem you gotta watch for is the leads on the ESC are set up really stupidly. And that's not what we're used to seeing from Ishin. Oh yeah. It's actually not that bad. 8% left. So I would say that about three and a half to four minutes is a safe bet, but feel that battery. Yeah. She's toasty. toasty. So guys, without further ado, let's adjust that right now. Uh, let's go down to the timer and let's change it from five. Let's go ahead and set it to three minutes, 30, and then we're golden. Guys, this plane's cool. I really like it. Uh, it worked out great with the uh, Spectrum goodies. I would definitely say that the build time is quick. It's not especially hard to build. It's definitely a low tool count, but you do need to have some glue. We have links to foam to foam. Foam, would, foam to foam would be great if you're going Horizon for a battery uh, because we link to the batteries there and then you don't have to pay special shipping for that, which would be nice. Um, mucilage is another good alternative, but we had glue from Dynam Planes because we love them. Blue. That was a joke. <laughs> anyway, um, Dynam doesn't try hard enough. That's why we don't. Hey, uh, this tip is the worst damage we had. And to be honest, I think we'll be able to remedy that. Um, if you don't push the limit 
on your times for an EDF, you're gonna tend to have better experiences. EDFs are battery eaters, you need to be aware. This is a 50 millimeter. It sounds pretty good. I mean, it's a little bit on the vacuum cleaner side, I would say. And you know, here on Brian Phillips RC, we bring the truth in our real experience. That doesn't mean that we always give uh, scathing reviews to everything like Dynams, but um, in this case, we don't want you to think that it's bad at all. I love this plane, this is a really fun plane. It's simple, it's not something it's not gonna be. Don't expect this thing to be a replacement for the 80 millimeter F, you know, F-16 Falcon from E-Flight, e you know? I mean, this thing costs less than the battery for that plane. Well, as I'm flying it, I'm flying it with a 7006S, which is going for like 185 bucks right now. So yes, you can actually buy this whole plane and the receiver for probably maybe a little bit more than that battery shipped. That's incredible. 1300 3S, no, you don't have to have a smart pack, but uh, the smart packs do work with the connectors. I think your flight time may be a little bit shorter if you're not going with a smart pack, just because they auto balance, that does help. But it also hurts in certain ways because you don't get a very good warning when you have one cell that sags a little bit. So keep that in mind. Love that the inlet comes in. It's a true, real inlet and then one cheater down here. Feel like it might have been a little bit starved. You could probably get a little bit more. And look how many blades there are. That's got to be like a 14 blade or 15 blade. I don't know how many there are. It could be 12. Mm -hmm. But it, sound, it sounds good. Mm -hmm. It's not vacuum cleaner like, um, like the, the Vampire like the Havilon Vampire, mm -hmm. okay? The Mark 14 or whatever it was, the one that got killed over there. It's not like that. That one sounds like a straight up vacuum cleaner. So um, what else? I feel like the CG is probably okay as reported in the manual. I felt like we added a lot of weight to the receiver the way we mounted it, which was sort of stupid. So keep your receiver light, keep your battery light as you can. I feel like you wanna have that battery back as far as you can so that you can get it into the alpha configurations and actually keep control of the plane. But just keep in mind, this thing flies very stable like this. You don't have a rudder. That means you need power to continue making dis decisions about where you wanna go. Otherwise, it's just gonna err on the side of going straight. Okay, that's something that you'll learn with Bank and Yank planes if you hadn't already learned it. Um, you can force the nose down and then bank and yank if you have enough altitude, but there are conditions where you're gonna get into where that's just not gonna work. So any thoughts from you, camera crew? I think it's for a good introductory small, it's not huge. It's a plug and fly though. Yeah, well. I would not say this is a great introductory plane, but I would not say that it's a terrible introductory plane. This would be a good second or third plane, mm -hmm. but just plan on fixing the nose. I mean, if I have to fix it, you're gonna have to fix it. Yeah. That's kind of annoying. But beyond that, and incidentally, the packaging was good on it. Yeah. I would stay tuned and watch the build. If you're thinking about buying this and you're new to flying, we have other planes that we've reviewed in very recent history that will allow you how to set up the receiver if you want to do forward programming, okay? Or you can just get one that's not stabilized or you can get a Lemon RX or whatever it is. If you want to get uh, something from Banggood, they have uh, Redcon is DSMX capable if you're using Spectrum. Uh, and then you can get an external stabilizer if you want it. You may not need the stabilizer, but in my expectation, if you're a brand new pilot, you're gonna want a stabilizer. These little planes are touchy. I felt like it flew really good though. It looked good. Yeah, it's beautiful. The lines on it are amazing. I hate that I'm holding this nose on right now because it's just kind of ruining it for me in terms of the look, but I love the way this plane looks. And it went together fairly easy. There's mm -hmm. a lot of glue. I used a whole Dynam glue bottle. Yeah. So, because you have to glue every surface in and if you think about it, put your plane upside down and when you put your carbon fiber spar through, try to get that ESC to get trapped under that uh, mechanism. That will help a little bit because you'll have to put less glue on the top of your receiver, which is what we were doing here. Mm -hmm. We were gluing all those wires on top of it and then I wanted to brace it. We used Velcro. I wanted to be able to remove it. Of course, I undermine my own choice. So no big deal. It worked out good. I like this plane a lot, guys. Um, I feel like it's it's a good good enough flying plane that I would seriously consider it. And yes, Eshin does a pretty good job on stuff. I'm amazed at the scale lines. That's not something we typically get from the cheap Chinese brands. Um, good scale lines. They might get like close on some stuff, but usually I don't know if it's just that it's not licensed or what, 
but sometimes when they're not licensed, they don't really look right. And so it's like, oh yeah, look at this Boeing 730 or uh, 747, but it doesn't quite look like a 747, even though it's one of the most iconic airliners of all time. You know, we're gonna make it look intentionally a little bit different so we don't get sued by Boeing. You know, that might be what they're, they're rationalizing that with. This one, it looks perfect. And I'm an F-16 schnob, schnob. Guys, stay tuned, watch the build, watch the unbox, watch the radio setup. You might learn a thing or two if you haven't ever used a crashed AS3S capable receiver. And we will show you some tricks that you might wanna have in your repertoire. I didn't say it right, I never say that right. So I really like this plane though. I would highly encourage you to consider it. Look in the link below. If you buy from the links, you'll help support our channel financially with a small commission that's paid by them, not you. You pay the same price, we get a small commission, it helps us to fund our channel. Also, if you look a little bit further down, if you don't like buying this particular plane, there's tons more planes and different aircraft if you're interested more in those. Um, and then also in the comments below, let us know, hey, I'm looking for this thing. Have you ever done it before? If you're new to the channel, we literally have thousands of videos, uh, many of which are just like this and they're long and detailed, uh, most of them. Some of them are just short second thoughts videos and some of them are in series from back when we first started doing this and we get way into the weeds. If you think we get in the weeds now, you should see some of our old videos where there's like 50 videos for one plane. Um, but the thing is, at this point, if you're just learning how to fly or if you're just kind of getting into it, please, you are in the right place. Brian Phillips RC is for you. Yes, we want you to buy this thing because it helps support us financially, but no, we don't want you to buy this thing just because we asked you to do it. We want you to buy this because it's awesome. And we're gonna show you seven other great options as well. So that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. We show you what's good and bad about each of these things. And if you've got the money and you wanna buy it and you don't wanna take the plunge until you see our opinions, that's what a lot of people do. And so if you do that, definitely help give us a pat on the back by buying from the links. Any other thoughts, camera crew? That's about it. Stay tuned. It is like a sauna out here. Mm -hmm. We'll see you on the next go round. Stay tuned for the build, unbox, and radio setup. YouTube, it's Brad Phillips. Look at this thing. It's amazing. What is this? You may have seen it from some of our competitors. Had a <laughs> bad experience. That seems to be common. <laughs> what is that thing? It's an F-16 by Isheen. What? Are you kidding me? Isheen, the same Isheen that makes these 400 millimeter awesome planes? Yes, that one. These are ready to fly. This one here is not. By the way, those little 400 millimeter Warbird series, one of the best ready to fly planes you can get. And we really like them. And they are really good actually for being Chinese. Chinese ready to flies, which tend to be not as good as the Horizon offerings that we bring, but we've had really good luck with those ones. XK, Yixin, both Primero brands within the Chinese realm. Uh, we have worked with a couple other brands. Not had as good a luck, but we do have generally pretty good luck with these Chinese brands. This box looks a little squished. This is a plug and fly. It can be purchased as a kit as well. So we are gonna be putting in a Spectrum receiver from a crashed plane. Yes, that's right, a crashed plane. You heard it here first on Brian Phillips RC. So this is an F-16 50 millimeter EDF. Look how sweet this is. They even show in the description, they show wheels, but there's no wheels. Like a Easy real to get started. Sound wave. Like a real sound, and then they show like a picture of, I don't understand that. Look, there's tools, simple structure and convenient installation. Strong and durable mat material of EPO. Environmentally friendly, water-based paint. Oh, thank God. Oh my goodness. I, I thought we were gonna have to send it back. Oh, I know, I'm so relieved. <laughs> wow, look at that. That is some different packaging. They must not like foam anymore. Hey, you know what, guys? We are all about whatever keeps the parts from being damaged on the way over here on the long cruise ship environmentally friendly and water-based. Listen, they're talking about the paint, Megan. Don't make light of the environment. Oh, jeez. Wow, wow, jeez. Hey, you realize I got a mic on up <laughs> there, right? Okay, so I am super excited to see this. Now this General Dynamics 
is an old library. It's a real library. You can look it up. I know it's kind of strange. Yeah, camera crew, this is a real library. This is back when it was a test plane, which is pretty cool. There's kind of some weirdness there. Oh, that's one of those mold release bumps mm. or injection bumps or whatever, but it flattened right out. These are wet decals. I'm surprised to see that on an Ishim product. Normally they have sticker decals. And I, to be honest, I could care less what type of decals if they look good. If they're properly applied, they're all gonna look pretty good. Um, looks like we have to put our control horns on. That's a pain. I do love the missiles, that's sweet. I love that. And then look, it's like a full size, properly sized uh, flapper on. That is pretty sweet. Now, of course, this is gonna be aileron configuration on this plane more than likely because I'm not gonna go through the trouble of reprogramming that AR636. But if you wanna use a 631, you can just watch this video right here about this sweet T7A. We just set up a 631 in this beauty and we filmed the video yesterday. And it was awesome. Or wait, was it? It was a day, two days ago. No. It was two days yeah. ago. We filmed the flight. Yeah, because the weather We bad. used a 631. So we'll show you how to do it there. If you have any questions, uh, you can refer to that one. This one we're just going to use out of a crashed plane from years ago. I can't even remember what plane that came out of now. But either way, it doesn't matter. It was a 636B. And if you have a 636B that was installed in an AS3X and or safe select plane, and you're not sure if it's gonna work and you don't wanna reprogram it, I totally get it because I'm with you. I don't like reprogramming these. I do have the programming cable. You can hook these up to your computer and reprogram them, but it's kind of a pain. So I usually just mark down, like I did on this, where things were plugged in, and then I plug them in and I put the orientation on my note. So it says to the front, okay? So I just put those pins to the back of the plane then toward the nose of the plane. And then that tells me what direction it has to be facing to give me the right output on the control surfaces. But keep in mind, sometimes the servo is mounted, you know, with the output shaft up here, and then that spins a rudder, and then sometimes it's mounted like this and it spins a rudder. So you really don't know what direction the output shaft's gonna run. Speaking of shafts, look at that. Jeez, that's heavy, hold that. What? That's, I mean, it's incredibly strong, except it's really not that strong. That's kind of weird. Um, I gotta get this fuse out. I can't wait any longer. It looks good, except look at the nose. Already got ding on it. Well, that is, is not cool. I mean, it's gonna get glued. Right? It's gonna get glued, so it's not a big deal. But a little bit disappointed. That was a packaging issue. XT60, nice kind with this uh, rear guard here. That can be popped off, by the way. I want to show you how to do that if you guys are in a, a situation where you want to solder, solder onto it for like a telemetry module or something like this. All you have to do is just basically like prop here and then you can break it free. There you go, see? And then you can get right in there. Nice solder joint actually. Sometimes you'll see cold solder joints when you open those up and then you gotta fix them. And then also, all right, when we're all said and done, look at that, feel that. That's what not, that? not like sandpaper. <laughs> I had somebody telling me to use sandpaper instead of Velcro the other day. That is so cool. And by the way, this paint is sweet, actually. Wow, I'm not used to that on an Ishim product. It's actually really, really good finish. Cause like, just to give you an idea, we're used to more of a cartoon style finish. It's a little bit, it's, I mean, it looks somewhat scale, but it's maybe not totally scale. And look how the ailerons are. They're not really a scale appearance. They're just more of a get the job done kind of appearance. Mm -hmm. This is starting to look really nice. That looks really well, nice and too. and it's all painted instead of just like yeah. with a little bit of color. It looks like at one point they had this released as a landing gear model because there was a gear that used to pass through there. Huh. That's pretty sweet. There's a pocket for the servo wire. That's gonna be a pain to get out. Um, okay, and then servos on left and right. Now I'm not sure if I wanna set this up as a Televon setup or if I wanna set it up as just an elevator and then ailerons for roll, but you could technically do that. And if you were trying to get away with a flapper on setup, you could do flaps up front. So you have a simple flap and then you could do televons in the back and that would give you your roll. There is no rudder on this obviously, it's just a, uh, just a vertical stabilizer. And each of these bags, I don't know if I really mentioned this, they're all sealed on all four sides, except for the fuse. That one was opened on one end. And 
I think that the damage to the nose is probably pretty minor. I don't think it's going to show up in the final build. I do love the way this wing looks, though. Those missiles come off? Um, I oh, doubt it. But they, they come off after you crash. I mean... <laughs> they, they did they did paint them. <laughs> it took you a second. <laughs> no, I just... <laughs> yeah, dude, I got it. <laughs> all right, so I have a nose cone in here, I think. So let's un... It's all taped to the bottom of the box, so I got to be a little bit careful picking it up. Okay, here we go. We got some control linkages here, clevises, and then, yeah, nice nose cone. Yeah. So we actually had this plane sitting here for a couple of days, but we had a tight deadline on another plane. And so we felt kind of bad. We had bad weather this weekend. Uh, we haven't had very much bad weather lately, which has just been super draining because we've been able to film like anytime we need to. All the time. And that is very uncommon. Typically we have a couple of weeks of bad weather here and there. We just haven't had any. Ooh, that's sweet. I like that it's one piece. That's actually pretty good. I like that a lot. Then I'm assuming that that's going to go right here. There's a little bit of a groove to receive that. That looks actually quite good. They actually got the nose right on this plane. If you don't get an F-16 nose right, just, just give up. It's not ever going to look right. I'm, <laughs> I'm serious. I'm an F-16 schnob. Schnob. All right, so that's all those pieces. Now there's uh, horizontal stabilizers and canopy taped down to the bottom. So yeah, that little bit of damage on the front is not going to be an issue at all. That's sweet. Okay. We've had pretty good luck with Yishin though in the past. <clears throat> I don't know why they did the general dynamics paint job though. I think it's kind of lame if you ask me. I love the gray and I love the finish, but then that just comes back to a preference issue. I, I know somebody probably gets a real kick out of it like the people that were involved in that build. Okay, so this is the user's manual. You want to show I the people some funny fun. things while I get this all pulled out. Why do they keep showing unflattering angles of this? This plane is actually really, really beautiful. It's got plane. Check this out. We have the uh, horizontal stabilizer and elevator. It's actually a pretty good size elevator too, now that I sit and look at it. I was concerned, sometimes when you have a full functioning televator or Telvon on a plane, and then you have a model uh, where they don't do that because it's a lot cheaper, simpler mechanism to just have a pinch hinge like this and then have that elevator on the end of the control surface rather than having, you know, the full action. My experience is that when you lose that full action, I feel like the plane doesn't look as scale no matter what you do. But generally speaking, these do kind of fly a little bit better unless you get up into the bigger scale sizes. Um, okay. So you can see that's empty except for this last piece. So that's pretty cool. If you guys don't have a good place to eliminate all your foam garbage, this would be good because there's not very much foam in there. And foam does really build up if you get a lot of planes. We know that all too well. Like floor to ceiling. Perfect amount of anhedral there. That's sweet. Okay, so this is all gluing together. So we need to get some glue. I'll probably use China glue for this. And uh, what we'll do is we'll take a quick second and get things put away and come right back. Okay, so the instruction manual said you need to get sticky on things. Mm -hmm. From a tube. So I was like, could you help me with that? It's right there. You got it. You did it all by yourself. <laughs> so we have a Q-tip here. We're going to go ahead and get some stuff glued on, guys. 1300 3S is what, what this calls for. Hey, do you think, should we like use Tom's wonderful utility item that he purchased oh, for us yeah. with his hard earned money? Yeah. As a gift for his favorite RC YouTuber? Yes. You should. Oh. Thanks, Tom. We appreciate this gift. It's so funny because like, <laughs> we always have a hard time getting each other gifts. And good old Tom, he did the trick. We're just going to slather a little sticky here. Just a little bit of sticky there. I'm going to uh, just kind of go somewhat. Hopefully I didn't go too much. But you can see there's no paint there, so you should be safe. And then kind of the same thing here. Just a little bit of sticky. Uh, not glue, sticky, guys. Remember, that's what the manual called for. We, um, we also learned some other interesting things. 
uh, that the Chinese recommend. Do you want to teach them some things? Mm -hmm. that, okay. What what other things do we learn? On? Keep all of the the parfs of your body. The parfs. Out of the fan. Out of the fan. Well, and no, hold on. They listed off other. They they said hands, hands and other parfs. and other parfs. So you know <laughs> what they mean. And do not think about it. It will be a bad day. Your sticky does not go in the fan. Your sticky does not go into the fan at all. Do not get caught putting your sticky in the fan. That's all we're going to say. And, okay. and don't fly over organized games. Only disorganized mm -hmm. ones. Yes. <laughs> or in wet weather. If it's wet out. Yep. Okay, so this one here. We got that glued now. It's not quite ready to set on there, so we're just gonna, now that we've got the glue slathered, we could stick that on there, but we're just gonna let that set for just a minute. And smell. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cooking off. It is. So then the nose cone, same thing. I'm just gonna basically slather some sticky on it. Some sticky. Oh yeah. Are there Whoa. no screws? Oh my goodness. Yeah, goodness. I know. I really just like pumped it right in there. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, so once you get the sticky on there, then you can put some sticky on the nose cone and kind of the, the idea with this China glue, this is China glue from a Dynam. Thank you, Dynam, uh, for, for sending the glue with the plane. Okay. So we've got that there. This one we could probably stick on, but I'm gonna let it cook off. You gotta let that stuff cook off. Mm, just let it be exposed to the air for a few minutes and you will thank yourself later. Cause it's, it's so much easier if you just let it cook off for a few minutes. And when I say a few minutes, there's like five or six pieces here. And that's, I mean, it's by the time you start getting done with your glue, you're going to basically be ready to start, you know, sticking them together. Okay. When, when you're in out of that glue, you need to do another time. No, oh. no, no. <laughs> you just get that different glue. No. Okay, good. <laughs> we already have glue. We already have glue. Don't worry. No, we don't have to do that. my life flash before my eyes. No, we're good. We got a backup plan. Actually, we already have foam to foam in the drawer. By the way, if you guys don't have a Dynam and you uh, want to avoid that like the death plague, then uh, I don't, first of all, I don't blame you. Dynams are project planes. Everybody knows. This could be a project plane, but I kind of doubt it. I'm just going to like make sure my wires don't get sucked in or anything. Hey, why are you laughing at me? Okay, so we got that slathered in there. Nice. Hope that doesn't drip on my counter. Me too. All right, then, oh, I got sticky on my hand. Gross. I know, seriously. Like a sock or something? What? What are you talking about? I'm so confused. What's gotten into you? Okay, look at this. See, it's pinned with that foam bump, detent, whatever you want to call that. That's pretty so easy. It's just glued together. It's just glued together. I mean, seriously, this is not anything new in the RC realm. It's just something that most of the other manufacturers have realized annoys our types. Our types. The easily annoyed type. The, eas <laughs> the easy annoyed, easily annoyed. Well, I can tell you this, so far it's been a lot easier than a Dynam. Well, yeah. Now that being said, Dynam has provided a lot of really nice hats and shirts for us, as in one <laughs> of each. Dang it, look what just happened. I cleaned my schmear off, and once I cleaned the schmear off, the glue came off, or I mean the, the finish came off. So you'll notice I'm just going in reverse order here, uh, whatever I started with, and I just got the sticky on there. Now it's set up. Now watch this. Once I stick the sticky together, this should be basically ready to rock, man. Oh yeah, see, it's, it's just really, really, really sticky. Okay, so we're good there. And I mean, we're going to go fly this in like 10 minutes, so... Uh, for those of you that think you need to wait hours and hours, you, I mean, you can wait if you want. I watched a video the other day and the gentleman was suggesting waiting 24 hours. And I'm like, what, what, why? You know, this stuff will be set up in minutes. If you want to wait for a full cure, that's fine. But I always found that after you crash a plane, it's much easier to take the parts apart. <laughs> that looks really good if you do it with fresh glue. That actually, those angles are great. This anhedral is perfect. I love it. That is really sweet looking, actually. I love the lines. Okay, sorry, I'm kind of a sucker for F-16s, you may have noticed. 
We did. Oh yeah, that's that's a good fit. It's a little tight. <laughs> Nothing a good ramming won't take care of. Oh yeah, there it is. Look, I made it. That is a fiberglass tube, by the way. Not a carbon fiber. It's just one of those black ones that looks like it could be carbon fiber, but it's not. <laughs> so don't get excited. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. This thing's not going to really be a big problem anyway. Oh, so there's no screws. You have to glue this together too. Wait, are you sure? What? Hold on. I don't remember seeing a sticky label on that. There's, oh, you don't, oh, show them the sticky label. I think you do glue it. Sorry, camera crew. Actually, oh, did we mention that this is a 1300 3S, not did. a 2200? And by the way, the XT60 is going to generally work with your IC3s. If you have smart packs, you should be okay. Um, I'd like to see if the thing will do a 2200 3S. The directions don't include putting the wings on, so. Oh, they don't? No. So like that's that's optional. Optional, optional step. Oh, wait, maybe this is the wing. Oops. Oh, here, wait, hold on. Megan, oh, come on, it, man. There's no sticky label though. It just says four. Just says four. It is a color manual. Sort of. It's a color manual that skips putting the wings on. No, they're there. Color, it add wings. It doesn't huh. say sticky, it just says four. Okay. So guys, listen, these things don't pull out very far. Be careful. Ooh. Note that the orange is forward or the yellow is forward and the brown is toward the camera crew here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this on. I'm not gonna go all the way down with it. Then the orange needs to go forward. Orange, you glad that you lined up the orange and the brown. That was so lame. It's like a dad joke. Dad joke. I don't do dad jokes. All right, here it is. See this? Same thing. Slide it on. Pull this out a little bit so you can see. Okay, orange goes away from the camera crew. Brown is toward the camera crew. Okay. Now, I'm assuming that there's a Y cable involved here because if you'll look, this is an aileron. What the heck is that? Throttle. Please set the ESC route again before taking off what we'll just skip whatever that was supposed uh, to be uh and then what's this what's this wire for did they show that in the manual are you kidding me That's yeah hilarious. for seriously all i'm gonna say is there's an elevator yeah so if you intend to reinvent the wheel like i would normally do on one of these setups you're gonna have a real fun time with it so i'm gonna slide these in just so that the connectors go in the hole. And then you'll note that there is basically um, a pocket here that you have to glue into. So I am going to uh, probably just go ahead and squish a little good, uh, good sticky stuff on here and some sticky stuff on here. And then I'm gonna put some sticky stuff. I'm gonna get this lined up first and slid in. There's not really a good way to control what position all those wires are in. So I think that's why our friend had some issues. Cause you know, there's, it's like, it just is what it is, you yeah. know? So, I mean, and you do run into that once in a while, guys. I mean, we poke fun at our competitors all the time just because it's easy and you know, we're smaller than them. So we might as well, it's all in good taste. <clears throat> Let's look at this. See, nothing on the bottom. So we're gonna flip this over like this. And we're just gonna squish a little bit on there. And a little bit on there. And you're like, geez, Brian, how much glue do you need to hold one wing in? Well, I don't know. It's not like the instructions tell you. You just have to guess. Just guess and hope you get it perfect. So, so look, now I'm smearing it. Oh, okay. So you have to smear it a little bit. Now these ones, you probably need to be a little bit careful. Can you see the smearing? Mm -hmm. I don't want people to not know how to smear it. I think we got it. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Cause if you try to penetrate with a uh, really dry sticky, it could cause problems. Yeah, the smearing is. The smearing is very important. Okay. Listen, smearing is very important. I know smearing, I'm an expert in smearing. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna stick this in the hole. The wire is gonna go with it, maybe. Hopefully. Oh, get in there, you turd lover. 
So I'm gonna use my forceps, also known as hemostats. If, you, if I ever like cut my carotid artery, you can just clamp it off, you know, like with a prop because I was trying to stick my other parfs Your into parfs the- in it, yeah. Woo! I hate it when I get Sticking my parfs into the EDF. Honey, quick, get in here. I stuck my parfs into the EDF. Grab the forceps. Oh, I can imagine it like it was just yesterday. I was at the old house. <laughs> mm, yeah, that was not real convenient there. I'm not a big fan of the way that went together. That's kind of sucked. But it is what it is. I mean, I get a little sticky on my hand again. Man. Let's try to get this one stuffed in there a little better. I mean, it'd be nice if I could knowingly pull the wires through, but I just honestly, there's just not really a great way to control that as you're trying to, see? Yep. It's just, there's no good way. So you just gotta kinda get in there with the sticky and plan on getting the sticky all over everything around and you know, if it blows up all over your hands, face, whatever parts you've got next to it, it's just kinda the way it goes. I do not like that gap. That's lame. But I'm actually okay with the strength of the wing. I think it's gonna be fine. I would really like to see on something like that, if you're watching uh, manufacturers, you really ought to be including a piece of tape that has a matching finish. Because when I go to take this glue off of here, you know, it's gonna take that color off. Watch, you just wait. Don't take the glue off. Why? Do you wanna have glue all over you? I just like, I'll just put the stuff in there then, I guess. That's fine, I mean, you wouldn't have to, but I just assume get the glue off of there. Really what needs to happen is we need to have a piece of tape on this type of application that we can just lay over that. We could actually just tape it. Why don't we do that? That's probably worth the extra ugliness. Okay. Because this is a flat finish. And, oh man, this thing is so dinky. It is. Are I those... even know, know if I can fit this. Oh no, that is not good. See, I'm onto the glued part. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and put some tape on here. It'll be fine. It's not gonna hurt anything. And then we know for sure they're not gonna slip out. Uh, and if we need to have an access inside, we can just... just uh, cut the tape like we do on UMX planes and stuff. Now this tape does not even need to be all the way across the wing. It can just be part of the wing. But in my case, looks like I got it plenty long. So I'm just gonna get to where I know I've got a good termination point and then I'm cutting it. Okay, pretty simple stuff. Fold it over the inside edge there, and then we should be golden. So part of the reason we show you these steps is not just um, to increase the length of our videos and therefore the boredom level. We really know that a lot of you guys are new to the hobby and you're trying to figure out, you know, like, hey, this seems a little bit overwhelming because I haven't done 50 other planes and I really wanna make sure I get it right. Maybe I don't have, you know, the flexibility or um, finances there for if I make a mistake, I really want to try to have the best chance at success. And, we, and that's why we do this. Uh, to help you guys that are basically new. To the hobby, just kind of get comfortable with it. And you can watch us. I mean, we're not really, we, we do take seriously getting these planes built nicely. Um, we screw around a lot when we're reading the directions and especially when they ask us to pack a lunch. Um, cause believe it or not, the Chinese manuals occasionally do ask, ask you to pack a lunch, you know, for flying events. Cause it's very important. They are concerned about your safety. Um, but we, we want you to be able to follow along and, you know, take from our little bit of experience that we might have edge on you. Look at this. So the top, we're going to do the exact same thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm just kind of getting that so that it's long enough to reach. And it's, it's really simple. See, I let it stick to me because the static, it'll cling to your finger. Then you get to the end and then you minim minimize the amount of oil that comes off of your fingers or other parfs. That's why nobody hands spraying tape in our family. Seriously. 
Seriously, that drives me nuts. And our dispenser does have that little rippy thing on it, but. But I use scissors because scissors make a clean cut. So now we're gonna have that shiny spot there and people are gonna be like, ew, that's disgusting. Well, I'm not buying that plane now. It's got a shiny line on it. I do need an X-Acto knife because I got a little bit, I got a little bit too long on that last piece. So the way I'm gonna resolve that is I'll cut right here on the seam and then I'm just gonna try to fold it down if it'll go. Yeah, that worked okay. See what I did? Mm -hmm. Super easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's a technical term. So our batteries are getting done charging. If you guys uh, don't have the proper size battery, uh, basically what we're gonna be using is Smart Batteries by Spectrum. That's a Horizon Hobby company. Um, you know, you can, you can probably pick up something from Banggood while you're ordering if you'd like, but we have some of the best batteries in the industry right now. So of course we're gonna use these. These are not cheap, but if you're wanting to have good luck in your RC experience, one thing I can recommend is get good batteries, get a good charger. Don't mess around. You're wasting your money if you get a cheap, crappy charger and a cheap battery because- Trust me, I've had them and I've popped them. And I've destroyed them. No, I've destroyed these too. So just to be clear, it's happened on more than one occasion. And yes, we have destroyed these right here. Yep. $185 batteries or whatever they are today. If you're watching this in a few years, it might be more. If you're watching this next year, it could be $250. I don't know. So as with anything else, if you want it, you better buy it because the price is going up, um, which is a real bummer. But man, that looks sweet. That is really good. Really good. That is really beautiful. I'm happy for you. I don't know why you're... I'm just... I'm just thinking about the value equation. Oh. No. We'll come back to that. Okay. So the value equation is always something that we keep in mind because when you come to Brian Phillips RC, we want to bring you good options. Now that doesn't mean that every plane is the option that's right for you. It may not be the option that's right for you in this particular plane. And everybody that's in this hobby for more than five minutes realizes that the plane you're flying now is not going to be your last plane, okay? And that's why, that's why this hobby exists. No matter what you tell your wife. No matter what you tell your wife. I remember when we started this, this, doing this thing, I was like, oh, I'll just need like one high wing trainer and then like a, like a, just like a another, jet. Just a jet. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, really that's it. Yeah. I think we'll be good. Mm -hmm. And I genuinely believe that at the time, but I just didn't realize how wrong I was. <laughs> um, so now what do we have? Fly forward, how many years? Six, Six years, hundreds of planes later. Yeah. Not everybody's going to be that fortunate. <laughs> My camera crew is so lucky. And the My question is, how much does the battery cost? That's what I learned to ask. How much does the battery cost? Yeah. Well, if you don't already have a battery for another plane, and that's one thing you can do seriously when you're getting into the hobby and you want to save some money, is get batteries that are consistent with multiple models. Mm -hmm. 2200 3S, 2200 4S, real popular size right now. Um, that's why I was kind of hoping that this thing would be a 2200. That's why we charged a few of them because we thought maybe they would be a good fit, but they might fit in here, but they're not gonna be a good fit. They're probably be too heavy. Mm -hmm. So we've been burned by putting in receivers before we know where the CG is. So we're just gonna like use this as a dry fit for now. And we know that the pins need to go back on this one. And this is the other thing we're gonna do. We normally, we, we wouldn't ordinarily do it this way because our radio setup is usually a separate part of the video, but just for the sake of what we gotta do on this one, because we're using a used receiver. We're gonna turn on our transmitter. I'm gonna click, scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF, go to model select. I gotta pull the screen away add new model, then I can scroll whatever I want to create there. You can go to Heli or whatever it is. I'm going to go to a new Acro, is what they call that, and then create. So then once that's created, I'm going to use what's called a bind plug. And this is a bind plug. A bind plug shorts the ground to signal on the bind port. The new ones have a push button, okay? 
So that's going to go in here. It is keyed on spectrum receivers, but it doesn't, some of these things don't even have cases anymore just to keep the weight down. Okay, so I'll have that plugged in. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to jump in here. Hopefully the lighting doesn't get all screwed up. So it says system setup, model type. That's where you can reset the model if you're using one that's already been created. And then model name. So this is our 50th model on this transmitter. And the NX6, to be fair, we also used uh, all the models. We copied them over. Okay, so this is gonna be the, how are we gonna designate this? This is technically the F16 from Esheen. So, but it's a 50 millimeter. How about we just say Esheen? Mm -hmm. um, so we'll do, we'll type that in real quick and come right back. Okay, so it says 50 colon Esheen F16, 50 millimeter. Make sure you always put in a size class because you're probably gonna end up with another plane that's the same but a different size. Then we're gonna walk out of that, that beeping's normal. Then we can go to aircraft type. Um, the wing type should be normal and the tail type should be normal, but we just won't have a rudder. Okay, so it's a bank and yank. That means that you have elevator and you have ailerons, but you don't really have rudder. There isn't even a steerable nose gear on this one, so it doesn't really matter. Then I'll go to next. I'm gonna scroll over and change this to like a jet. That's good enough. Well, actually they have a, like a Habu later on. I like putting the picture so that I can kind of remember what it is. Easier. Yeah, that's probably the best one right there. Mm -hmm. And if you get into the IX lineup, then you can have pictures, like physical pictures that you take either with the IX20 that has a camera built in or an IX12. Um, allows you to put in your own. Okay, so channel assign, we're not gonna mess with that yet. And we'll just walk back out. Okay, so then we're gonna go in and set up a throttle cut. Throttle cut's gonna be set to this switch, just in case any of your parfs end up in the EDF. I mean, you never know. What, what do you have in there? What parf is in there? Get that parf out. Oh, thank God, the throttle cut's on. So we're gonna set the timer to, did they say how long the time was? Uh, no. The recommended time? Not unless it's on the back of the box with the battery size. Really? Do you want me to go look? Nah. Okay, say no. In-kind presentation. The real size. CG location. By the way, this is the plug and fly. If you get the, this is the plug and fly. You can get it as a kit and a kit has no electronics, okay? They don't really explain it very well. There's no conduit in there. Culvert. Culvert, there's no culvert in there. You the what, player what have to provide you your own. You the player have to provide your own. So um, when you get the plug and fly, it comes with servos for the wings and servos for the elevators. There's four total and they're nine gram servos. So it's not very much money. Then you have to provide a brushless motor and an EDF that's of the 50 millimeter size class. Um, also that le means that everything is going to be a little bit more complicated to build. So I would highly recommend just get the plug and fly, uh, because then all you have to do is provide your receiver and battery. Okay. Cause you have to provide all that with your regular, um, with your plug and fly anyway. So we're going to have the receiver in there. We still have to put on those linkages, but we're going to get everything energized first. Look for the control surface direction of travel. You know, this just doesn't really work well for this plane, does it now? It's just easier to lay it down, okay? So we're gonna set up a five minute timer. So under timer, this is gonna be a five minute one out timer. That means when you go over 25%, the timer is gonna start counting down. And at one minute, we're gonna clear to nothing. 20 seconds, we're gonna do nothing. At 10 seconds, we're gonna have voice. So it's gonna count down in an obnoxious British voice. Expiration is going to be tone and vibrate, and then it's going to go off one tone for every minute after. Okay, then we can walk out. Uh, telemetry is going to be irrelevant. We may have some telemetry on this AR636B, but it's going to be mostly receiver voltage, okay? And that is not to be confused with pack voltage. Pack voltage is the one you want. Receiver voltage is largely useless to us um, because you know, I mean, if you're flying a, a sailplane, maybe it would be useful, you know, like one that doesn't have a motor. 
Okay, then audio events we're not gonna mess with and we should be able to walk out, clear the timer, throttle cuts working, and then the rest we're gonna have is just gonna be over in monitor mode. You can see we have ailerons, elevator, rudder's not even hooked up, gear doesn't exist. Yeah, you just don't hardly need any channels. And let's set up some dual rates in Expo. Aileron, you know, I am gonna make one mix here. The mix is gonna be rudder to aileron. Okay, rudder to aileron at a rate of, see how the rudder's moving? And it's inhibited right now. So you don't see any change. I'm gonna set the rudder to aileron to 100%. Ooh, actually, yeah, we're gonna do 100%. No, let's do 50. Because if you do 100%, then you're gonna overdrive the servo. Mm. Can you see that pretty good? Because mm -hmm. there's like a glare I keep seeing pop up there. Okay, and we're just gonna turn that to on. So now you see when I move this, the rudder output moves, but it doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. It's not a hooked anything. Then that just means no matter which stick I move, I'm gonna get output on the ailerons, okay? But you see what I'm saying? When I move them both, you can potentially overdrive them. You see how the aileron output's at 150? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking down here. See that? Okay, so that's fine. That'll give us a little bit of something. You can also set the end, uh, like the throw, so that it doesn't go anymore. The reason I like that is because I'm used to a mode two elevator, ailerons, rudder, throttle, and so on and so forth. And so I like to have the feeling of yaw control, even if I'm not using a rudder. Okay, so that's just the way I've always done it. Okay, if there's a legitimate steering wheel, then it will impact your yaw when you're flying. Okay, so getting back to the Expo, we'll click, go down to dual rates and Expo. And uh, for ailerons, let's just set it to, well, let's not even set it to anything. Let's turn it to a switch, switch F. In the zero position, we'll do like 10. <clears throat> In the middle position, where we're gonna actually start flying from, we'll go to 20. And then in the upper position, we'll go to like 40 and we'll drop the rates down to like 90. Then we're gonna go over to elevator. We're gonna set that to the same switch, switch F in my case. If you don't like F, use another switch. If you don't like the F and switch, use a different switch. I'm just gonna say it. You can use the G switch. You can find the G spot harder. over here. It's harder to find. It's, well, depends. 20 and then 40, and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what's the significance of 10, 20, 40, Brian? Like, did you just pull that out of your, you know what? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna show you why. This is, this is the lowest. This is the most. This is half of that. This is half of that again. Okay, so this is where we start. This is our get out of jail free card if it's too much expo. This is our get out of jail free card if it's not enough expo. The idea is when you go flying the first time, then you say, oh my goodness, it's way too touchy. Okay, bring it to the less touchy setting. Oh my goodness, it's like hard to control because it's not touchy enough. Bring it to the next setting up. Get it to the ground, set your middle to that, have it, double it. That's how you do it, every time. It works. I've never flown a plane that that system didn't work for yet. And I've flown a lot of planes. There have been a few where I had to really go crazy with it, but generally fine. Usually if I don't have a stabilizer. Okay, so go ahead. Um, on the top setting, I reduce the rates just a little bit because I don't do a lot of rate adjustments. I do mostly expo. Okay. And then rudder, I'm not even going to mess with on this because there actually isn't a rudder. Well, you know what? What the heck? If we ever add a rudder, then I won't have to wonder. I'm just going to, I'm just going to set it. I know it sounds stupid guys, but I just kind of like to set things. I'm kind of a creature of habit. You may have noticed. Have you ever noticed that? Camera I'm crew. So glad you pointed that out. Yeah, it connects it connects so, a lot so of dots, dots for you. Like all of them. <clears throat> okay. So again, this isn't even hooked up to anything, but we're still setting it because I'm so such a creature of habit. All right. So now everything is hooked up um, or set up here electronically. Now we need to try this receiver. If this receiver doesn't work, I'll bail on it. I'll show you another way of doing it. Uh, using Ford programming with an AR631. But that's kind of an expensive receiver for a cheap plane. 
And this is already in my possession, so I'm gonna show you how to use this. And plus that might be helpful for more of you than just using a brand new receiver. So this is done. These two are getting close. This one's actually done too. So we can unplug the balance or the uh, main discharge and then the balance lead. This is a Gen 1 Smart Pack. These are Gen 2 because they don't have a balance lead. This is a balance lead. So each of the cells in series, each of the cells in series, each of the cells in series, there's three of them. Hence the 3S, 11.1 volts, and 1300 milliamps means that each of those cells, there's three cells in here, and they're each 1300 milliamp hours each. Milliamp hours is a rate, not a quantity, true. But um, it still gives us a size, a generic size, okay? So like this is 7,000 milliamp hours and there's six of them in series. One, two, three, four, five, six of them, long, flat cells. And then on the end, there's a controller board here that's a smart circuit. This is a Gen 2, so you have a smart lead in the middle. This is a Gen 1, but it still has a smart lead in the middle. That's what that pin is. This is a bigger connector. It's an IC5. This is an IC3. There's also an IC2. It's smaller than this. IC5s are compatible with XT90s. Uh, roughly compatible. They're not supposed to be, but they work. IC2s are not compatible with XT30s, but IC3s are compatible with both EC3s, which stands for E-Flight Connector, so it stands to reason since this is made by the same mother company as E-Flight. And this is compatible with an XT60. As you can see here, you can stick it in. It's a little bit of a tough thing, but you can do it. So, but the first things first, we have to plug in our plug and we have to plug in our ESC plug. This is the ESC lead. So this is labeled poorly, I might add, because like what direction is what? Well, I'm just going to assume the far one down is going to be our ground because of the way that's labeled. Okay. Yep. So that's right. I don't know what this is. It must be some sort of a data pin. Yeah. I'd really like to know. This is the elevator. So on our monitor mode, you can see the elevator is the third pin or third set over. So I'm gonna go to channel three and slide that in with the brown down, the signal up, and this one is for the ailerons. So the ailerons are channel two. So the brown goes down, brown is down. I have a question. Yes? Does it matter how it was from the plane that it came out of? Yes, that is actually an incredible plan. And I don't know why I didn't think of that. Very good point. Throttle, ailerons, elevator. You want to talk about that some more? Oh, good. Thanks. So it just happens to be that they're set up the same. Now, the reason that they're the same is because I chose a similar wing type to what that had been program programmed for. This also had a rudder, gear, and flaps, okay? So you can deduce from that it's one of those planes, whatever planes had rudder, gears, and flaps. I can't even remember what this thing came out of. It doesn't really matter, sure. though. Yeah, okay? So it's going to be physically placed this direction. So this is where we're going to decide if this works. So first things first, we have to bind it. I'm just going to lay this down here so it can kind of stay put. I'm going to turn off my transmitter. Once it's fired off, I have my throttle cut on. I'm going to leave that on. I don't even need the battery in here. I'm going to push this in tight in the corner. It's going to go into bind mode. If you're binding with safe select, there's a different binding procedure. You plug this in. See, it's kind of hard to get that in there. You can make an adapter, but you don't have to. These will go. I'm gonna show you, and I know you don't believe me yet, but you will. Okay, so that's in there. Now look at the flashing. You want this to be still. Now, for safe select to be active, you're gonna pull that out, okay? I'm just holding that down so that it stays positionally true with the axis of the plane. Now, whilst pushing this against my hip, I'm gonna press that button and then push the power button. Now I let go, ah, oh, dang it. I held it too long, I held the power button too long. I'm holding the power button, now I'm letting go. So if it fails, that's okay, because you can still go into bind mode. Click, scroll down to bind, bind. It 
It's not going to bind. It's too close. Now watch this. Bind. You could just keep trying. Got it. Bind complete. Now this is going to boot. Two dances. That means safe is active. So we have to make an assignment at some point for safe, but let's make sure our controls are going in the right direction. So elevator goes up, elevator goes down. So that's right. That doesn't move. That doesn't move. That's good. So now let's look inside under the wing. This, this obviously needs to be mounted. We all know that, I believe. I hope we know that. You can already hear the AS3X are safe working. So when I pull this over here, that would pull, that's gonna make that rudder go down, which is actually backward, okay? So that means that the aileron axis is backward on this. So how do you change the direction of the aileron axis? There's two ways you can do it. You can either reverse the servos by physically taking those out, taking them apart, switching two leads of the three on the trim pot or the, the potentiometer for feedback and then switching the motor leads. That will make that operate opposite. Same thing here. Or you can put in a servo signal reverser off the back of this plug for the ailerons. That's option two. Very easy, very cheap. Those things only cost like $6 for one, maybe $10 for a pack of two. We have links to them if you need them. And then alternatively, <clears throat> I want to just verify this here real quick. I, I'm just looking at them again, looking at it again. I want to make sure I'm saying this right because it's kind of hard to visualize. Oh, dang, it's hard to see. So that is definitely going to pull that down, which means it's going to roll the opposite direction. So okay. then the last method is to take this receiver and first of all, go to servo setup, travel, reverse, ailerons. Now, this is critical. When I put the stick to the left, I want the plane to roll to the left. So if I move the stick to the left, that's going to push up on this aileron and it's going to pull that aileron down. That means it's going to lift this wing and push this wing down simultaneously. That's what you want. I'm going to go the other way. Yep. So that's going the correct way. But now what direction is the correction going to occur? Because if this is AS3X equipped and it's already programmed, Oh, the third option, of course, is to reprogram the receiver so that you reposition everything, okay? But there is a trick, and the trick is very simple. This receiver, okay? This is gonna compromise safe. Because safe won't know what position you're in. So we will unbind in safe and bind in AS3X only, because I don't care about safe. We might be able to get away with doing that. That should fix it. But then that's probably going to then upset our elevator, okay? So the elevator is still going up and down with the output, but then when I pivot the plane, okay, so those sticks, you see how they're moving? When I pivot this plane up, those sticks should go back toward the tail. Yep, see they're going toward the nose. So now they're- The correction is backwards. backwards. Yep, but then check this out. Now check this out. But our aileron should be correct. So when I roll this wing down, that lever, Okay, which direction? If I roll this wing down, it's pulling toward me. That's correct, actually. See, that thing should come toward me, and it does, okay? I'm also, incidentally, in safe, so I'm gonna show you how to make your safe select assignment if you happen to have a receiver that works. So right now, we're just changing the, the orientation to make this work, okay? <sighs> you know, there is one other thing that we could do. We could potentially take the rudder servo channel and use that. And then we could turn this on its side. And then we could use the rudder for the elevator channel. Now we're getting really into the weeds here, guys. So all you have to do is think about it like this. You have three axes that you're controlling. Okay, you've got roll, you've got pitch, and you've got yaw. Okay, safe controls typically pitch and roll, not yaw. Yaw is irrelevant in safe. Because the idea is we're going to level the craft and we're going to control the pitch to keep it flying straight and level. We're not really concerned with this spatial direction. We don't care what direction we're yawed as it pertains to safe. 
unless you get into the full safe and then they will control that yaw to help keep the nose corrected, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So you have controls on your stick and then you have artificial controls that are the stabilizer and or safe. In this case, they are one and the same in terms of the AS3X basis for safe. Safe is sensor-aided flight envelope and then of course there's the pilot. So the pilot flies, then there's the automated system that also can fly the plane. Okay, so when you let go of the sticks, it is still going to interact with the environment around it. So when the wing gets kicked down, the, the, the aileron will go up to counteract that to a degree. If you're at the same time giving it roll input to roll down, it knows to not counter your input because you have given it input. That has to do with the gains and then they have a word for it. And I always forget this word when I'm talking about this. Uh, it's called, um, I'll think of it, it'll come to me. But anyway, that's, that's one of the settings that you have to do on this. That's one of the settings you don't have to do anymore on forward programming, it's awesome. So forward programming uses telemetry from here to here and we have full duplex communication and we program that to know what type of wing type, tail type, and the plane it's in, it's very helpful. All right, so getting back to the point, I think what we need to do now that we have this set, we have to set safe select so that we can make conditional changes. So we're not using gear, that's usually where I set safe if I have no landing gear. So we have to put the sticks down and in, and then cycle five times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, It didn't work, look. Let's see if that's working. It is working. There is actually a change in output. I'm listening again. Down and up, down and in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Okay, maybe it's already a sign from previous. So mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do is I'm going to power this down. We're gonna let things recycle and then see if it works a second time. We are gonna get into the weeds a little bit making this stupid thing work. I don't care, it's fine, it just is what it is. A lot of people have these things sitting around. They're expensive. A lot of people don't wanna program them. Okay, sticks down and in. One, two, three. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's already set to that. It might already be set to that. That might be why it's not responsive mm -hmm. because it's already set to that. Okay, look, it's trying to auto level the plane, which means we're in safe right now, okay? So if we're in safe, then those ailerons are gonna try to find the quickest route to level. Hmm. So it's trying to find the quickest route to level but we have not been able to designate safe select yet. That's a problem. We have to be able to designate safe to select so we can turn it off and then we can hook up our control levers, our control arms. That receiver is safe select, right? It wouldn't be like full safe that you can't. No, it's off. not full safe. Okay. No, I mean full safe. Yeah, this would be a safe select. The AR636, uh, 636Bs were all safe select. Um, the AR636, Six A's were the only ones that would have been mm -hmm. safe select. Okay, so I'm gonna try this again. Sticks down and in. Um, we're just gonna go to a different channel. We'll go to aux one, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Still not working. Hmm. That's very annoying. Okay, we're gonna go to a higher channel. Nope, that's not gonna work. That might work, aux two. Oh, it's already on. It's on, uh, on aux too. See, you can see it's changing its state. So, well, yep, that's definitely turning safe on and off. So it's already been assigned, evidently. It should have been renewed when we rebound it. Safe, off. Now we're in AS3X. You'll notice nothing's happening. Let's test throttle, throttle cuts off. Got a pretty good amount of power. Wow. That's kind of incredible, actually. I'm looking at my wires just to make sure I don't have anything dangling too bad, which there definitely is an ESC dangling down. How? 
So you have to, I guess, pull this lead through and tape it off maybe. That's pretty crappy of them. Yeah, that's... Um, okay, so getting back to the point, now AS3X is working, but AS3X we can work with, just not safe, okay? So we need to make an assignment for the change in state. All right, let's show you guys this. First of all, that's auxiliary two. So I'm gonna make an assignment from auxiliary two to be on gear switch, okay? So we're gonna click, scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF, scroll down, scroll down to channel assign, and then I'm just gonna to go to aux two. Aux two is gonna be A. And then I'm just gonna put that to B because it doesn't matter. It really doesn't, we're not using it. Okay, so now safe is on this switch. Throttle cut. Okay, so you can tell we're in safe because it tries to auto level and we're out of safe. I want safe to be up here. So I'm gonna switch the control channel by going over to reverse. That's aux two, not gear, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So now when it's in the back position, my neutral position, it's out of safe. When I'm pulled back, it's in safe, out of safe. That's the way I wanna be. I wanna be out of safe for this step. Now we can put on the control horns. The control horns are right here. There's four of them in a bag. Uh, there's two short and two long. Should be pretty obvious which one's which. Did they say which holes to stick they them in? They do actually. It's like the, go to the back and then go back. Uh, Three, four. I can't tell what that says. No, it says it in the suggestions for installation, five and six. Wing steering gear from the outer to inner hole four. Oh my goodness. I'm thinking that says from the outer to inner hole four. So outer to inner hole. And then you see how there's the bend in it? This, this is way too long. Must not be the right one. Yeah, these ones are the ones for the wings. So you wanna stick these in from the outer to inner hole. So yeah, they've got them actually opened up for us. You can tell because they're a bigger hole. Okay, so we're gonna slip this in here, then we're gonna pivot it so you don't have to ding it up, and then you can flip that around. I don't know if you guys caught that, so watch on this one if you didn't. You need to kind of do it from the inside here. Okay, and then you're ready to go. If you don't do it right, you're gonna ding the, the bottom of the plane. But trust me, this thing's gonna get dinged up as soon as you start flying. Then these ones, oh look, they, did, they made the hole bigger. She did not. See, that's fine. So they already did it. This one needs to be on the outside. So it's a lot easier, you just put it in and then fold it, okay? And same thing over here, make sure your elevators are symmetrical or your plane is gonna roll all the time, it's super annoying, and then you gotta trim and waste a bunch of trim to do that. Okay, so this has to get screwed way and ooh, super easy. Like actually super duper easy, that's great. Sometimes these things are really hard, these clevises. Okay, so then they suggest, did they tell us what hole to stick the I'm other sure. end in? I'm not sure. Um, not really. Oh, I'm not sure. Probably on a plane like this, I wanna make sure I err on the side of having enough control authority and not running out of throw. So I'm gonna go to the inside hole. That's probably the wrong call. Okay, so I'm just seeing which one lines up. See how that's giving us up elevator. We don't want that necessarily. We want it to be neutral right now because we're not in safe yet. Okay, if we were in safe, we'd be trying to correct the condition of the plane. So I'm just gonna make that flat on the bottom. Hopefully that's good enough. And then just snap it and then put this little rubber band back over. I think that that receiver might've come out of a P39. I think it might've come out of a P39, that's but I'm not guess. sure for what it's worth. And it must've had a weird setup because we've tried using it on a number of different planes and always given up we always, yeah. because the direction. The British chick is counting out right now because we're getting down to the time timeout. Three, four, five, six. Okay. So now I'm looking at this and I'm looking at this and I'm noticing that this isn't centered very good compared to this, you see? 
So I gotta be real careful that my controls are equal. Um, I think I, I've got it pretty good. Remember, if it's not perfect, you can do some trim, but you don't want much trim because you, oh yeah, it's not enough. We need to go out more. There's two. Going to the inside hole again. That feels like it, it could be pretty flat though. I think we're probably okay there. Yeah, I can live with that. All right, so now I'm gonna just take a couple of different angles of this. And I want you to show the people at home. They're, they're very close. I think I almost have this one needs to come out a half a turn. Mm -hmm. This one needs to go down, down. to the ground, which so. is actually up, okay? Just maybe like half a turn. And that's just use your best judgment. Try to get them as close as you can. That would be the receiver popping down, don't worry. Everything is okay. It did kind of scare me though. <laughs> Uh, that, I'm gonna need a screwdriver. It doesn't wanna pop out. These little connectors, sometimes these clevises are really, really tough to get unplugged, unpopped. See, just like that. So I'm going out, mm -hmm. then we're gonna retry. And I'm gonna just come over here and look. Oh, that looks, that looks close, but I, I feel like we were probably in the middle there. We had I think it. that's. That's pretty close. I think it's a little bit better. You think it's now, better? Yeah. Okay, I'll take your word for it on that one. Okay, so same thing on the other ones. We have to do the same process. And the receiver is literally hanging down. That's why you hear the chattering. That's AS3X trying to correct for environmental impact. Remember, if we can't get this working, we'll put in another receiver. And the other receiver will be Ford programmable. This plane would be pretty sweet with flap rods, but I just don't wanna waste my time on it. I wanna see what it looks like. See how it flies first. Mm -hmm. Make sure we don't have like our wires get sucked Suck in. Suck anything into the India. How are you going to prevent that? Um, I don't know. No. Skills okay. to pay the bills or something. I'm not sure. Sweet, good plan. I'll probably take the ESC and oh, okay. Look at that. So that's even there and even there. I'm just using my fingertips to feel the end, and then snapping that. Okay. It's going to be a lot easier to do this other safe talk once we get all these moving in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Because it's confusing to explain it without being able to see the control surfaces. Hard enough with, with seeing the control surfaces, especially if you're new to flying. And that's one thing you guys got to keep in mind. If you're new to flying and you're trying to do it on an economy mode and you're buying cheap planes, I need to warn you, okay? Cheap planes are not as easy to build and they are not necessarily as easy to fly. These ones are good. They're pretty cheap and they do a good job and they're ready to fly. So you take them out of the box, you might have a couple of small components to put together. If it says plug and fly, just get something else that's ready to fly. You can thank me later on that one, okay? And don't hear me wrong when I say that. I'm not trying to discourage you from learning or improving. I really want you to learn and improve. Uh, but the thing is you just, you can either take my word for it or you can find out the hard way, which, which is what a lot of people choose to do too. I mean, including myself on many things. Uh, sometimes it's better. The best way to learn lessons is the hard way, the most expensive, painful, difficult way that you can. And it's just ways of life. <laughs> um, okay, so now that we have everything in there, elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. So that part's working, but, but, big but, Elevator up, elevator down. When I lift this, it should go up. When I, yep, it's going, it's going the right way. It's going up, it's going down. But then the ailerons are going the wrong way. So when I roll this plane, look what happens to this. When I lift this wing, it should come up. Can you come over here? When I lift this wing, that should go up to counter it. What's it doing instead? Going down. Same thing. Yeah. It's going to induce a roll. So as I hand launch this, it's gonna start pivoting to one side or the other and it's gonna exaggerate until it hits the ground. That's exactly what will happen. So, in order to correct that, we're gonna try going around like this. Now look what happens when I lift the wing now. It goes the right way and the right way and the right way. You see what's happening? Watch the aileron. Ah, sorry, watch the aileron. Goes up, it goes down. It goes up, it goes down. Now I'm looking at the other aileron. 
it goes up, it goes down. Now, watch the elevator. When I lift up, it goes down. So that means it's opposite. <sighs> Interestingly enough, on this plane, there's a couple of different remedial actions you could take to, to salvage this process. And so we're gonna go over one of them now. We've already talked about servo signal reversers. That'd be super easy. It would take literally unplug the wire and uh, you know, just mount this how it was in the plane before and just switch the, the ailerons, okay? Then that means the output from this gets changed, but it's positionally still giving the same output, okay? I don't know if that made sense, but basically it's gonna run these things the other way. Yeah. Okay? Or do it for the elevator. It doesn't matter. Just pick one and do it for whichever one you prefer. Now, alternatively, in this case, I tried going back like this, and that did fix one control axis, but it screwed up the other. So we're going to go this way, and we're just going to try flipping it on its head like this. Okay? If we flip it on its head, up is up, down is down, roll is up, and roll is down. Do you see what's happening here when it's upside down? Look, it's upside down. Mm -hmm. Now watch, elevator up, down. I'm calling out what the correction should be. I'm gonna roll this, what would be the left wing up and that aileron should go up. Up, down. This right aileron should be up, down. You see how they're all working now? What did I do? But if you move the control surfaces, I can switch that. Okay, so now watch. Up, down. Roll left, roll right. But all the corrections are correct. Now, here's the key. Watch this. Watch what happens with safe now. It's gonna freak out, okay? Safe is on. What's it doing? Trying to find the quickest route to level, which would be there, so upside down. Which might be kind of sweet, actually. <laughs> so we are gonna leave safe on. Oh, good. That'll so that we can fly it upside down. That'll be cool, actually. I'm, I'm actually quite curious to see how it's gonna work. Okay, so now that we've done this, and who knows, the shelf life on this plane might not be as good as I would like because I am programming it to fly upside down with unattended. Um, okay, so let's show the people what I'm talking about again just to reiterate what I'm talking about. This receiver is being mounted intentionally upside down because I don't wanna reprogram it. And this gets it spatially aware uh, for the correct circumstances. So we're gonna just glue it down backward. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Uh, they'll never know, except I showed you, okay? And they don't matter. I don't care what they think, okay? okay. So now, you see what I'm also doing? I'm trying to leave enough room to put this battery in because remember, we know what direction that needs to be, so I'm just gonna write up, up, and I'm gonna write forward with an arrow, up and forward. Um, I need to know if I can center gravity this thing out. Yeah. So let's just assume it's approximately correct. Now let's measure the center of gravity. It's 66 millimeters back from, of course they have it in this, it's the leading edge of the wing. So 66 millimeters back. So you take your calipers, put it to approximately 66, then get it exactly from the leading edge of the wing. So in my case, it looks like, I would say that the 66 millimeters is right, right there, okay? Right at the edge of that, right there, okay? In my experience, I want them to be marked on the wing because I can't really center it out over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it like this. Now, if you measure from the two inside points or the two outside points. Okay. So 66 is right at the front edge of that circle. Dot, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna make a big bump. I just actually pierced it. And then just to prove to you guys it's the same, there's the same. It just points from the other side, okay? And we're looking at the same spot, okay? So rather than pierce it with that, I'll just pierce it with this uh, screwdriver. See that? Center of gravity mark center of gravity mark, and you're like, but Brian, you just put a hole in the wing. Yeah, I did. Darn tootin'. Okay, so there's our center of gravity mark. So it's easy to find, but it's easy to feel. 
because many times when you're checking this, of course you got the thing upside down, okay? I have to get this antenna tucked away in here and then I have to kind of simulate um, the position of the battery just because the leads and stuff all have a weight, a certain amount of weight. And we're gonna use a fresh battery when we get ready to fly, obviously. Nice drop in here, by the way. I'm just gonna do it kind of temporary-like. You know, the other guys don't usually show this level of detail in their videos. Um, and the reason is, because it's, you know, it's hard to film this stuff, it's kind of a pain. And after you do it a couple hundred times, a lot of it is the same. But the thing is, we understand that this is really what you guys need if you're new. So, as far as I'm concerned, we'll keep doing it as long as you keep coming back. By the way, if you wanna help support the channel, buy the stuff from the links. If you don't wanna buy the stuff from the links, check below and we have other things that would be similar. And uh, we also have Patreon and PayPal if you don't like monthly support. Okay, so the two holes. It's a little bit nose heavy. So I would say we're probably gonna have to pull that battery back so it's like centered, okay? So the, the reason we're doing this now is because we need to know that we can mount that receiver where we're thinking we're gonna mount it. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we're gonna have to glue it down. Stupid antenna keeps coming up. It's really annoying. It has nothing to do with the plane. It has to do with my antenna. Well, that's a lot better. It's a lot better. Still a little bit nose heavy. I would say we need to push it back further. But we know we can get it glued in. So we're gonna do that now. We'll get some hot glue and come right back. Okay, so we thought of a brilliant plan. Now that my camera crew, my wonderful wife and camera crew has gone all the way downstairs to get me a hot glue gun. I'm just gonna use Velcro. Jeez. I know, isn't that awesome? I'm gonna refund my trip to the basement. Okay, so we'll just do that. I'm just getting it lined up so that it's kind of square with the other piece. Where did the Velcro come from? It was included with the airplane. Uh -huh. Yeah. So then I just need to really carefully pull all these wires up and kind of above the receiver. I know it's weird that we're mounting it upside down. Believe me, folks, it doesn't matter. It, it's just what, it's the way you got to do it if you want to use this receiver and not reprogram it because it's spatially aware, correct now. And it's going to be pretty stinking cool when it does fly upside down auto leveling wise. It's gonna be pretty cool. Okay, so then it may not initiate unless it's upside down too. So, but I, again, I'm okay with it. So now I need to get this antenna to be secured. And I just showed this trick the other day and we show it occasionally. It's pretty simple. There's a trick you can use to uh, get the antenna to just kind of be secured and protected. And there's a, a number of different ways you can do it. These are diversity antennas, so they're both gonna be kind of in the same spot. So I'd like to kind of bring it up here. So I think I'm gonna just tape it on, on the side here. But you see, you're gonna have your battery and stuff there. So I guess I'd really like to avoid that. So I'm gonna come over here and tape it. You can either take and make a slice, and then you can force this down into the slice of the foam or you can just cover it up with a piece of tape and that works really nice actually. It, it generally does the job and works. This is a coax cable though, so you don't wanna kink it at all, okay? So if you can avoid kinking it, that would be best. Plus all these wires and everything, they kinda of don't maybe look great. So I'm not a big fan of it. And then that slap from the ESC, show them up the thrust tube. <laughs> Wait, hold still. Can you see it move? Hold the thrust tube. Can you see it move? Well, I can see the light change, so The yeah. ESC is moving. Hmm. Pretty, pretty crappy to not have that thing secured somehow. It's one thing when it's not in, in a bad spot. You know what's going on? Hmm. That thing is going over. Can you get the camera to point down that? It's going over our wing spar. Wait, move your hand. Sorry. It's going over the wing spar. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I can see that. So not a whole lot we can do about that at this point. The wing is already glued on, but that would have been nice to know earlier. Mm. That's all right, here's how we're gonna deal with that. Okay, we, we, we need this to get retained, okay? So why don't we just use the Velcro to retain it? 
So, you know what? I wonder if the Velcro is even gonna work. I'm not even sure. Could you like zip I could just, tie that all together? I could just glue it on there with the hot glue. Yeah. That you so selflessly went and got for yeah. me. You're welcome. I knew you were gonna do that. And the reason I'm hot gluing it is because hot glue is really easy to take off later, especially off plastic. It would melt the foam, but it won't damage any of this stuff. Okay. It's a little bit heavy, but what are you going to do? Especially when you put a giant glob on there. Do you have problems with my glob size? Well, you didn't have problems with my glob size before. What are you doing? I'm putting that on top of it because it's hot and now I, I've got it covering the glob. Then if I want to pull the glob off, I can pull the glob off in one big glob. Hmm. Okay? That's just a piece of backing from the Velcro. That's amazing. I think it's pretty sweet myself. I don't know about you. That's how I always put my airplanes together. You glob it Every together? Every single time that I've built one. All one time? Mm-hmm. Watch um, this. I've built two airplanes. Thank you very much. You have? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but that's supposed to be secret. See this? That was a wax paper piece. So now look how neat that is. Pretty cool, huh? See? Sometimes, sometimes I even surprise my wife. I knew I married you for a reason. Because of the glob control? <laughs> You're so good with hot glue. <laughs> it's wonderful. My husband is hot. He's really, really good with hot glue. Sorry, I said that wrong. All right, here we go. Let's stick this battery in here and make this thing. Let's make it happening. Okay. Tony Beats. Okay. Battery. Oh, let's get one that's charged. How about? What do you think of that? Are we going to fly like soon? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, what do you think we were gonna do? I don't know. This video is only like an hour and a half long, so. Well, so we're gonna time. start. We're gonna start again so that we can start with the flight. But yes. Otherwise, we're gonna, well, let's make sure it turns on and everything works properly then. Okay. Okay, so one rule of thumb, shut off your transmitter when you think you're done. Seriously, shut it off, power cycle everything. If you're gonna have a problem, that's where you're likely to experience it. Okay, so have everything shut off, have everything put away, make sure you're in a good spot when you're getting ready to fly and that way you're not gonna rush it. Now, the other thing too is, I'm noticing that because there's only Velcro holding this in place, I got another sweet glob idea. Mm. Watch this. I'm gonna glue this thing to the other thing, and then I'm gonna just glue it some more right here. Check this out. Boom, right there. Get some more glue. Yeah, you were, I could tell you were concerned. Not enough sticky. That is so hilarious that they actually put that in the manual. The Chinese, they are hilarious sometimes. It's like, you're sticky. It's like, guys, it's called glue. It's not called sticky. Um, A for effort. A for effort, China. Apostrophe S. Apostrophe S, <laughs> that's right. Okay, so I'm just using this to help pull some of that hot glue back up. And then I'm gonna kind of take it off of the antenna. Maybe kind of stick that. This antenna should be in it should not be at that angle. It's kind of a bad angle. My diversity antennas are, are like touching. That's not good. You, I mean, diversity antennas are not very effective if they're in the same orientation. They're supposed to be 90 degrees of each other. And the last 28 millimeters of the antenna is what's exposed. So that's the part that actually received data. Sorry, the truth comes <laughs> out. Did, I just don't understand how you know that, but like, you don't know our kids' birthdays. What? Who says I don't know my kids' birthdays? <laughs> I, I have you for that. <laughs> Thanks for putting that out there. Okay, so here we go. So that, that glue holds that in. So it looks very globish. Mm -hmm. I mean, after all, we know that you married me for my glob control now yep. that we've established that. Now, once that glue is all set, then this will be a little bit more fixed, okay? So much more fixed that I'm gonna glob some more. And you're like, why are you putting so much weight in there, Brian? Um, because I'm more concerned about the receiver not getting ripped out and wires pulled back into the electronic speed control 
than I am about beauty. Just saying. The ESC. Man, that sunset's gonna be pretty. Yeah, it is. All right, guys, so there you have it. Um, that's gonna dry and set up in just a few seconds and we'll come right back. Okay, so we have the transmitter on. Uh, the NX8, by the way, um, I would recommend if you're buying a receiver, get the AR630 and then you can do forward programming just like what we did on the T7A. Mm -hmm. uh, less the rudder stuff and the flapper ons, you wouldn't have to do that. The reason I recommend that is you get AS3X and safe if you need it, okay? And we'll show you how to set it up in that video. This video, we just use an old one, you know? So it's kind of a different setup. And we know there's a lot of, lot of people out there that have those old AR630 or 636Bs uh, from crash planes or whatever. Mm, okay, I mean, this strap is kind of annoying because it's, it's glued. You can tell somebody glued it. Oop, it did, it's, it broke free. Good, good, that's the way I like it. Now I can pull it tight the way I want it to be. And if you can't pull that thing tight, then it's really, really, really hard to secure the battery in my experience. So you'll note that I, I kind of have it where I think I want it. And then I can just kind of wrap this lead around. And then I'm gonna try to put in a voltage alarm, which is going to be uh, just set to, let's see what's set to. You press this little button. Let's set it to 3.5. So we're not necessarily gonna freak out if it beeps for a second, if it recovers, then we should be good. You know what, we'll go to 3.6. 3.6 on an EDF might be better. Now you'll notice this isn't, this isn't initiating. You know why? Because, you're, well, because it, it perceives the plane to be upside down, okay? That is awesome. Okay. We could totally hand launch this plane upside down. But Wait, but then why does the AS3X still correct the right way? Because safe and AS3X are two different components. Okay, so watch. With safe on, it finds level. It's gonna level that way, it's gonna level this way. Pretty cool. I'm excited to try it out. Okay, so without further ado guys, we're getting ready to go outside in real time and we're gonna be flying this thing and it's gonna be awesome. If you haven't already bought one for yourself, we have links in the video description below. I'm actually quite excited to see this thing. It looks like it's gonna be good. I mean, look at the scale lines, beautiful. Obviously, we've got the NX8 here. It's been working out great for us. We're using the 1300 milliamp Gen 1 smart packs. You could use a Gen 2 and get away with it, but you won't be able to plug in that alarm. Uh, if you haven't already bought them, these little voltage alarms are nice. And of course, we have links to them if you need them. That thing's just gonna chime when it gets to a certain level because our telemetry is lacking on this setup. Um, really excited to see this thing fly. Love the scale lines. Final control surface test. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Turn on safe. <laughs> that is going to be hilarious. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more. We have tons of new footage coming. Obviously, this is a brand new one from Esheen. You can definitely get that at Banggood. Thanks to Banggood for sending us this plane. If you buy from the links below, you'll be helping to support our channel with a small financial contribution. You don't pay any extra, but we get a small commission, just like from Horizon Hobby or the other brands that we work with. And so we really do ask you the best way you can support us beyond watching the videos, liking, subscribing, and coming back for more would be to buy the stuff from the links. We think it's the most equitable way. You get what you want. We get what we need to keep this channel funded. And then if you are so adverse to this particular plane, look below, we've got a lot more planes there. And then also we have Patreon and PayPal if you're not into monthly support. We really appreciate you guys doing what you can. Come back for more.